الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقال فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم كان الناس امه واحده فبعث الله نبيين مبشرين ومنذرين وانزل معهم الكتاب بالحق ليحكم بين الناس فيما اختلفوا فيه وما اختلف فيه الا الذين اوتوه الى من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات بغيا بينهم فحد الله الذين امنوا لما اختلفوا لما اختلفوا فيه من من الحق باذنه والله يهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book he said كان الناس امة واحدة the all the people they were on one ummah they were on tawhid and then of course iblis he comes uh, amongst the people and he gets the people to split up and to divide and become and and yet to you know and to divide and become different groups all one against another so he said kana an-nas ummatan wahidatan fa ba'd Allahu nabiyyin mubashshirin wa mundhirin so he sent the 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 prophets to call the people back to tawhid call the people back to following the sunnah of those prophets calling the people back to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mubashshirin and it means give glad tidings for the people that obey the messengers or mundhirin and warn the people against a punishment for the people that disobey the messengers <laughs> then he said wanzala ma'ahum al-kitab bil-haqq and he sent down to each of them a book and truth that the people can be guided by this book 
guided by the messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to his messenger and told the people, this is how you're going to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this way they can judge between themselves. They can judge between each other in their affairs and all the things that they differed in because they had difference. And, you know, people, they, they differed in different things and this is what caused them to break up into the groups. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them the prophet to bring them back together. So they have this message and this, these are the issues that you differed in. Now you go back to the book and you find the answer. All right. And then the, the people did not differ after that, except for the people who had gotten the book, had gotten the guidance, and they learned the guidance. And they went against that guidance. And this was oppression and transgression from themselves. It, it was made clear to them. You know, just like we have the Qur'an and we have the Sunnah, it's clear for us. It's very clear. But you have a bunch of people from amongst us, they don't, they don't want to suffice with this. They want to start adding things to it. And this causes all the division. And this is what happened with all the people before. Allah al-Musta'an. So he said, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتُ بَغْيًا بَيْنَهُمْ فَحَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ بِإِذْنِي So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the people that had true belief in Allah. The people that were ready to obey all the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gave them guidance. Well, what happened to the other people? So, فَهَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْحَقِّ بِإِذْنِي وَاللَّهُ يَهْدِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ إِلَى سِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whoever he wills to the sirat al-mustaqim, to the straight path. And of course, the other people, we know what happened to them because of the opposite. So these people, they got the guidance, and the other people, they got destruction. And there's nothing more more destructive for a person than for him to go into the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think that he's doing something correct. To go into, uh, you know, innovating in this religion and think that he's doing something correct. There's nothing more destructive to his akhirah, to his next life. So the people that want to obey the prophets, and specifically now with this last message that we have with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah and its totality. The people that want to obey the messenger. Then the messenger is for him, a mubashir. He's the one that gave glad tidings to you. You want to obey the messenger, just like the, it came in a hadith of Abi Huraira, uh, radiallahu anhu, in which the Prophet said, Kullu, kullu ummati yadafaluna jannata ila man aba. Said, all of my ummah, every, all of my nation, all of this ummah will enter into jannah, except for who? Except for the one who refuses. Faqila man man ya'ba ya Rasulullah. So the Sahaba, they asked the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, who's going to refuse to go to Jannah? He said, man ata'ani dakhla Jannah. Whoever obeys me, goes to Jannah. Wa man asani faqad aba. And he said, and whoever disobeys me, then he's refused. He's rejected it. So your obedience to the Messenger, your, your obedience to this deen, your, your, uh, your ability to every single day to try to carry out the rights, uh, the, carry out the rights that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has over you, that is, you, you're accepting this tabshir, the bushra, which is the glad tidings. You're going against this and breaking up into different sects and breaking up into different groups. And each person has his own opinion about the religion and everybody is just happy with that. And it's not suf it's sufficient for the people to go back to how the Sahaba understood the deen. No, they have to go back to some imam, this imam and that imam, but they don't go back to how the Sahaba understood it. And this is, this is where we start to break up into groups. We have that guidance. We all have the same guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran and sent down and sent the messenger with his sunnah. And he taught that sunnah to the, to the sahaba. We go back and we check their understanding. But no, the people, they don't. They want to take their own opinions and how they understand the religion. And they don't want to go back to this. And these are people that don't even want to seek knowledge of this religion. They just want to voice their opinions just because, hey, I've been Muslim my whole life. I can talk about the religion. Allahum sta'an. Allahum sta'an. So this is what's causing all the division. For us to be guided correctly and to be united because everybody talks about uni unity, right? Why can't we all be united? We will be united. When the people decide that they want to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah with the correct understanding, where we all take one understanding and that's the understanding of the Sahaba. As long as you start to take from this Imam and that person takes from that Imam and now we have all these different opinions. How can we have 10 different Imams with 10 different opinions but when we go back to the Sahaba we see they all agreed on the issue? How do you see that? So the difference is from the people. It's not, it didn't come from the understanding of the Sahaba. 
So for us, we need to go back and understand the religion the way that they understood it, because this is the way that we broke up into these groups. They didn't break up into groups. You know, you didn't see any of the Sahaba becoming Qadriya, Jahmiya, Mu'tazila, and all these different groups. They were all united on the Quran and the Sunnah. Wallahu al-Musta'an. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شِرِيَةٍ عَلَى شِرِيَةٍ You know, عَلَى دِين. Here, Sharia it means عَلَى دِين. This is the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. عَلَى شِرِيَةٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَحْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you this, this set of laws, this set of this deen. And the Sharia is the Quran, it's the Sunnah. So then he said, فَاتَّبِعْهَا Follow it. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said down, so what? Follow it. He said, وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَحْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And don't follow the desires of those people that don't know. The people that think they know and they want to talk about the religion from their opinions, but they have no clue of what they're talking about and all they do is lead the people astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to beware of these people. وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَحْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ إِنَّهُمْ لَنْ يُغْنُوا عَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا they don't, they, don't give, they don't give you anything. They're not going to save you from the, from the punishment of Allah, nor are they going to give you anything in the Akhirah. Allah, that's only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can follow all these people, you can follow their desires. What are they going to do for you on the Day of Judgment? You think now on the Day of Judgment, when, they, when they're going to be tossed off in the hellfire for changing Allah's religion, you think that they're going to take responsibility for you? Or are they going to say, nah, Akhi, you're on your own. I didn't tell you to follow me, you follow me on your own, just like Iblis. So you got to pay, pay attention. This is, this is a serious, serious reality. You go back to the people that understood the religion uh, correctly. We don't follow people and their desires. We follow the evidence. We follow the adilla. We follow the Quran and the Sunnah. That's, what, that's the only thing that we were commanded to do. I love Imam Ahmed. Allah yirahamu. But I wasn't commanded to follow Imam Ahmed. I was commanded to follow the messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's my obligation day in and day out is to follow the messenger. Not to follow Imam Ahmed, not to follow Imam Malik, not to follow Imam Abu Hanifa. They're gonna, they have ishtihad, but I'm responsible for the taqlid, for the blind following of them. We go back to the evidence, we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. If you don't have that ability to do that, then that's what you need to be working on. You need to be working on getting that ability. How can you sit here and just take your religion and you don't even know what's correct and what's right and what's wrong? And this is your life. You're going to be responsible for it. Nobody's responsible for you. Not Imam, uh, not Imam Malik, not Imam Ahmed, not Imam Abu Hanifa. Allah yirhamahum. They're not responsible for you. You are, you are responsible for you, and they are responsible for them. They went back and they tried to understand the religion the way the Sahaba did it, the, the way they understood it, and they tried to practice it to the best of their capabilities. So we take whatever truth they have, and we stay away from their mistakes. So this is your duty to learn your religion. You're going to be res held responsible on this on the Day of Judgment, not anybody else. And don't blame Iblis either, because he's definitely not going to take responsibility for you. Allah Mustaan. So he said, إِنَّهُمْ لَا يُغْنُوا أَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The oppressors, they're only awliya to who? To each other. They don't care about you. Their only job is to follow their desires is to lead you astray. They don't care. You see, like a lot of people now, they're, they're just looking for a following. They're not looking for the truth. So they don't care about you. So, you know, they're only awliya to each other. The oppressors are awliya to each other. They're close friends and close companions to each other. All right, wallahu waliyul muttaqin. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the wali. He's the one that takes care. He's, he takes over the affairs of who? Al muttaqin. Who is the muttaqin? Who are they? Those are the people of taqwa. Those are the people that obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his commands. They obey Allah's commands and they stay away from his prohibitions. And that is taqwa. But first you need to have knowledge. You need to have knowledge of what are the commands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and what are his prohibitions so you can follow them correctly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, farraku dinahuma kanu shi'an lasta minhum fi shay. Innama amarhum ila Allah thumma yunabbi'uhum bima kanu yaf'alun. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he said inna alladhina farraku dinahum and those people that divided up their religion, وَكَانُوا شِيَعًا شِيَعًا it means to, to shayya, it means that they split it off into different groups. So they broke up into different factions, each one having their own opinion, just like we saw with the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, and all these different groups that you see today, Khawarij and Ikhwani Muslimin, and all these different groups. You see they all break up and everybody has their own opinion. 
And then what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to the messenger? He said, Lest min hum fi shay. You have nothing to do with them. Lest min hum fi shay. Innama amruhum ila Allah. That their affairs are going to go back to Allah. Thumma yunabbihum bima kanu yaf'alun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inform them of what they've done. And they're going to find this out. When they come on the day of judgment and they go to the hold of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the hold, which is the hold. And this is where the, the believers will go and drink from this hold. And if the, the, any believer that drinks from this hold on the day of judgment will never, ever, ever become thirsty. But then there will be a certain group of believers, or at least they look like believers. They'll be turned away from the hold. And then the, the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, Ya Rabbi, Ikhwani, Ikhwani. You know, these are my brothers, these are my, the people, these are Muslims. He said, He said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, He says, you don't know what they've innovated into your religion after you died. And then the Prophet sallallahu said, what? Oh no, please forgive them. Is that what he said? No, he said, suhkan, suhkan liman baddala ba'di. He said, suhkan, that means, may they be far, far, far away from me. Bu'dan, suhkan, suhkan. So he said, let, let them be far, far, far away from me. For anybody who has changed anything in this religion after my death, let them be far away from me. And he made dua on them. So this is a very, very serious issue. So they broke up into groups and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Lest the men who be shaykh. And then their affairs go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge them on the day of judgment for everything that they've changed in this religion. Wallahu musta'an. So, qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin. Fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Alhamdulillah, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa anna abdullahi wa rasuluhu wa mushtabahu wa sallallahu ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, He said, wa atasimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la tafarruku wa thkuru wa thkuru ni'matullahi alaykum ith kuntum a'da'an fa allafa bayna kulubikum fa asbahtum bi ni'matihi ikhwanan. وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَاءٍ حُفَرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْدَدُونَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the people, the Sahaba at this time, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ وَاَعْتَصِمُوا Hold fast to the hubble of Allah, to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the rope of Allah? It's the Qur'an, it's the Sunnah, it's this Deen, it's Islam, and everything. It's the obedience of Allah and staying away from the dis disobedience of Allah. Following the Quran and following the Sunnah, this is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Wa'atasimu. Alright, so if you look at the word Wa'atasimu, it means that not just that you're holding fast to it, but this is your protection. This is your isma. Your isma is a protection for you. That the only way that you can be protected is by holding fast to this deen. You have no other protection. No protection in this life and no protection in the next life. You think that a gun protects you. A gun might protect you from an intruder, but it doesn't protect your heart from all these, you know, desires of people getting into your heart and messing your heart up. And then you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that the only people that are going to go into Jannah are what? Man ata Allah bi qalbin salim. That the people that come with a secure, peaceful heart. No shubahat. No, no doubt in their heart. No desires in their heart. All they wanted to do, they wanted to live their lives in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they wanted to stay away from the disobedience of Allah and they wanted to die on that. Those are the people that came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment bi qalbin salim, where the heart is this in peace, peace and, tra and tranquility and secure, secure from all this bid'ah, secure from the shirk and secure from everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All of you together, hold fast to the rope of Allah. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't divide amongst you, don't become divided. وَاثْكُرُوا And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking to the Ansar. Because the Ansar before Islam, you had two tribes of the Ansar, Al-Aws or Khazraj. And they used to fight against each other all the time in Jahiliyyah. They had wars and wars and wars and wars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them together with what? With Islam. So he's telling them, وَاثْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ You know, remember the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You used to fight each other and kill each other and be, you know, be at each other's necks. Now look at the blessing that you have. Now you're brothers. 
And what did he say? He said, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُ مَعْدَاءً You used to be enemies. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought your hearts together. He brought your hearts together. فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِهِ إِخْوَانًا And then you became, with this blessing of Allah, you became brothers. It's a ni'mah. It's a huge ni'mah. If you don't want to understand this ni'mah, then wait till it gets taken away from you. And you die without this ni'mah. And then see how happy you are. He said, فَاسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَاءٍ خُفَرَةٌ مِنَ النَّارِ فَانْقَضَكُمْ مِنْهَا That you were on a cliff, about to fall into a pit of fire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you, and He pulled you out of that. Alright, فَانْقَضَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلَكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِ And like this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear His signs to you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ With hopes that you will be guided. With hopes that you will be guided. You have to understand this blessing. When this blessing is not that we go and we start to disagree, and we start talking about this religion with our opinions, we start saying what we think and what this person thinks, we go back to the Quran and the Sunnah, or we keep our mouth shut. You don't have knowledge about something, you stay quiet. And this is from the general statement of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَكُلْ خَيْرًا عَلِي يَسْمُتْ He said, whoever believes in Allah in the last days, then let him speak good. Good is that you speak about Allah's deen and truth. Ali yasmut, or he should stay quiet. Don't speak about this religion and divide the people up with your opinions. We want, uh, we want an understanding of this religion. We go back to the understanding of the people that truly understood it, not the people in 2023 that just want to talk about things because what? He studied engineering, so he has the right to talk about the religion now. Allah must die. So the last thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when he talked about these believers, he said, <laughs> So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <laughs> that they're constantly, they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if something happens where they fall out of the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make tawbah and they constantly return to Allah in all of their affairs. They return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّقُوهُ <laughs> So he said, مُذِيبٍ إِلَيْهِ وَاتَّقُوهُ And they have this, this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that causes them to what? To follow His commands and stay away from His prohibitions. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةِ And then they established the salat. And how did they establish the salat? The way that the Prophet sallallahu established the salat. Now like the Prophet sallallahu said, صَلُّوا كَمَا رَأَيْتَمُونِي The Prophet did not say, صَلُّوا كَمَا أَنْتُمُ رَأَيْتُمْ Imam Malik يُصَلِّي He said, صَلُّوا what? كَمَا رَأَيْتَمُونِي we go back to the sunnah and we learn the way that the, the Prophet ﷺ established the prayer. And that's the way that we pray. And he said, well, And don't be from amongst the mushrikeen, from the polytheists. Here is a general statement, but a specific trait of the mushrikeen. And what is the trait of the mushrikeen? Because they have no evidence. They have nothing from Allah. All they have is what? Their opinions. And then they each goes back to their own opinion. So well, they're all divided, right? So then he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مِنَ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ From the people that divided the people in their religion, they divided up their religion. وَكَانُوا شِيَعًا And they were all groups all against each other. Each one having their own opinions. كُلُّ حِزْبٍ بِمَا لَدَيْهِمْ فَرِحُونَ And each group from amongst them, each party from amongst them, is pleased with what he has. Uh, we're on the truth and you guys are on the bottom. This is, this is, this is, this is foolishness. Alright, we go back to the Quran, we go back to the Sunnah, we go back to learning this religion. And that's my advice to the people. This is the, uh, the advice, the, the best advice that I can give to the people is focus your attention, your free time on learning this religion. Go on back and try at least make some time every day that you read the Quran. The Jews, two Jews, three, whatever you can do. If you can't even read a Jew, read a half a Jew. And make some time that you sit down, you read Bukhari, you read uh, Riyad al Salihin, you read Sahih, <laughs> excuse me, you read Sahih Muslim, or whatever. But you continue to learn your religion. And don't die in this state of ignorance where you just you don't even know and you're guessing all throughout your life. We need to learn our religion or else you're going to end up following these desires of all these people and all they're going to do is lead you, lead you astray. Allah yuthabbitna ala hadha deen hata nalqahu bi. Wallahi hu al-wahi aladhi yastatin ya'mal hadha. Wallahi if we don't have tawfiq from Allah, Wallahi Allah, Allah musta'an ya'akhu. Allah musta'an. Aqeem as-salat.